Okay, I want to give you an example of uh, graphical analysis with the velocity versus time graph. Um, so here is a problem where it it gives me velocity as a function of time. You know, there are two linear uh, lines here for v versus t, and um, I'm given the initial condition that it's at position x equals two meters at one second, right? So um, so I'm told that uh, Initially, it's you know at t equals one second. It's at position two meters. So I've tried to kind of show that along the x-axis here. You know, at uh, t equals one second, it's at x equals two meters. So this is at t equals one second, uh, which means at t equals zero, it's somewhere behind that, right? So. Uh, so, so that's over there. And uh, if I look at the graph at t equals one second, it's moving with the speed of two meters per second. So it's moving with the speed of two meters per second at that moment. And at t equals zero, it's starting at four meters per second. So perhaps it's somewhere behind here. It's going twice as fast, right? So it's, it's going twice as fast, four meters per second at t equals zero. I don't know exactly where it is. I'm just drawing that there. And um, as I can see, it comes to rest at t equals two seconds. So perhaps here it comes to rest. Velocity is zero here. Uh, this is at t equals two seconds. And then its velocity is negative, meaning it reverses direction. And it's also speeding up with a maximum speed at t equals three seconds. So it comes to stop and then it turns around, it's going fast, right? And uh, then it starts to slow down. The velocity is still negative, so, but it's moving to the left, it starts to slow down and it comes to rest at t equals six seconds. So perhaps here, I don't know. Um, so, so this is where it comes to rest, right? V equals zero there, but this is at t equals six seconds. And the question is, what's the position of the particle at t equals six seconds, right? So you don't have to do this part every time. I'm, I was just trying to show you that we are basically looking for the position uh, at that point, uh, but the displacement itself, you know, um, since the initial condition is given at t equals one second, so it was here at two meters, and now it's over here. So, so the displacement is from here to here. That is the delta x, which we can calculate by integrating the velocity uh, because we know that v is dx dt. Or if I integrate both sides, I can say delta x is the integral of the velocity with respect to time. And the displacement is always between two points, right? And the two points uh, I'm taking here is t equals 1 and t equals 6 because I, I know something at t equals one, I know the position, you know, it's two meters at t equals one second, and I'm interested in what it is at six seconds. So I'm integrating it from t equals, not zero, t equals one second to six seconds. So, so this is my delta x. So I can write this delta x is the difference in position. So xf minus xi is equal to, you know, integral uh, v dt. This is here ti to tf, initial to final time. And so the final position is what you're interested in. So you can say that's equal to, you know, xf is equal to the initial position plus the displacement, uh, which is the integral of v dt going from ti to tf. Uh, and ti is my one second and tf is my um, six seconds, right? So, so t equals one to t equals six. And um, so, so this is initial position is given, right? This is given to be two meters, right? This is given to be two meters plus this quantity here, the integral, um, I can either write function for v as a function of time uh, and then integrate it you know but that's some work because i have two different functions for the two different lines uh, you can certainly do it that way but a lot easier way to do this is to just look at the area under the curve right so just say it's the area under velocity versus time graph right that's the displacement so um 
So that's easy to do because these are all nice straight lines. So I've got this area here, area of the triangle, and then I have this area, area of this bigger triangle. You know, that's my uh, displacement, delta x, right? So that's delta x, delta x. So I can calculate that. Um, so, so I've got the two meters, which is the initial condition, plus the area under the curve, you know, um, area of the triangle, one half base times height. And the base here is two minus one, that's one second, multiplied by the height, which is two meters per second. So that's the first displacement from one to two seconds, plus I have the displacement from two to six seconds. One half base is six minus two. That's this one here, that's four seconds, right? Four seconds multiplied by the height, which is negative two meters per second. So if I calculate this, this gives me the final position is the initial position, which is two meters plus the displacement. And the displacement is, I have one meter, from one to two, and then I have uh, negative four meters from two to six, right, seconds. So this is two plus negative three. So that's a negative one uh, meter. I bring back the significant figures here. So this is the final position. XF is a negative one uh, meter. Right? The displacement itself is you know, delta x is the negative three meters, right? Delta x is negative three meters, but the final position is negative one. So when I go back and look at this picture here, you know, my displacement from t equals one to t equals six, delta x is negative three meters, but the final position here is, you know, it's from here to here, that's just one meter to the left of the origin, right? So final position x at six seconds is minus one meter. Okay, so, so, so there's a bunch of problems uh, that use the same idea. And we are done with this problem here, but if you wanted to look at how an X versus T graph would look like, you know, I drew this a little bit earlier, so I'll just show it to you. So, so you can see, um, I'm trying to show both uh, the X, V versus T and X versus T. Let's make it a little bit smaller so they fit in. Um, so, so you can see the velocity is a lot and then it's decreasing to zero. So that's why I hope this doesn't look like a line here. You know, this is actually curving down all the way to zero, right? Uh, at t equals two, velocity is zero or the slope is zero. And then velocity increases, but in the opposite direction. So the slope should increase and then it should decrease, right? So, so that's the part that's decreasing. And at t equals six seconds, it has come to rest, so it's got a zero slope here. You see, so um, so these are all the different kinds of way that you can do it. Uh, if you're thinking of integrating uh, integrating the velocity versus time graph, you know, time function, you could certainly do that. You can show that velocity v is four minus two t for time between zero and three seconds, you know, um, seconds. And then the velocity for this other straight line here, uh, you can show it's two thirds t minus four. Uh, this is for between three and six seconds. So you can also integrate the function and, and come to the same answer, but unnecessary, unnecessary to do it because area under the graph is so much easier. Okay, I'll stop here.